Well, what a week. I have so much to talk about, and <laughs> so little time. I doubt that any of us a week ago could have predicted the future. I don't think that any of us could have predicted that Father Bob Rhodes, Brother Bob Rhodes, Father Robert Bob Rhodes, <laughs> would be retired. I know he didn't expect that. I know we didn't expect that. And I think that all the pollsters last Sunday probably thought that Hillary Clinton had a clearer path to the White House. And that didn't happen. The reason why it is important for us to wonder about what is in the future is that it's going to happen. And there are some things that we don't have much control over. We have to look at these things, though, and we have some perfect readings to do them. But I'm going to start with the Gospel and end with Isaiah because it's the easier way. <laughs> So I want to tell you something here about the Gospel. It is a part of, and actually both Isaiah, our reading from Isaiah, and our reading from the Gospel, are considered apocalyptic writing. Now, apocalyptic writing means it's about the end times. So anytime you hear, this is it, that's kind of apocalyptic writing. We, a lot of the times, uh, would uh, go to a disaster film. The Gospel, actually, is what looks like a disaster film. And if you have read any of the headlines over the last week, you would know that just as Jesus said, nations are against nations, kingdoms are against kingdoms, there's going to be earthquakes, today New Zealand, uh, earthquakes, various famines and plagues, dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. It's the newspaper. Are we in the end times? Somebody asked me if they thought that I, one of the uh, 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 people running for office was the Antichrist. Now why we all need to take a deep breath in this is that we have to understand apocalyptic literature from the Gospel, from the Bible. We are in the end times. Take a deep breath. We have been in the end times since Jesus died on the cross. I can't say it to you any more clearly than that. We are in the end times. So there's two visions of how this end time happens. We have kind of the disaster style that Jesus is talking about. And we have the Isaiah style of what the end times will look like. They both speak of the same reality, and they both have the same undergirding of Scripture. Jesus' last comment in this Gospel is the one that holds, that we need to hold ourselves to. He said, by your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the faith that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. It is the faith that makes us steadfast. I use the image of a lighthouse shining in good times and in bad, but steadfast. It is a reference point. This is our faith. Jesus says to us, it is by your endurance, your faith, that you will save your souls. So no matter what trial or error or difficulty or plague or pestilence or earthquake, whether it is political, geological, astronomical, intellectual, religious, pick one, I don't care. There is nothing that will separate you or I, us, from the love of God. Nothing. So if it is the end time, you, spoiler alert, know how the story ends. We will be gathered into the loving arms of God. That is God's justice. It is God's mercy. It is God's forgiveness. It is God's will. It is God's love. We will endure. Because our God endures with us. And now, 
we have Isaiah. It is when those contrasts come together and finally find their harmony and their peace. Isaiah presents to us this image that on God's holy mountain, nothing will be harmed. There will be peace. So much so that the wolf and the lamb are going to feed at the same trough, not on each other. They will be so in harmony with all of creation that there is no need for aggression or fighting or dominance. The wolf and the lamb will be creatures held in harmony by the presence of God. This is also apocalyptic literature. This is what tells us what's after the trial and the persecution and the struggles that we have. It would be so nice to be able to say that people of faith don't suffer. But then I'd have to talk to you a little bit about what happened on Good Friday. You see, Jesus knows about apocalypse. He knows what it's like to be pushed and shoved, to be ridiculed, to be judged innocently. He is innocent, but to be judged unfairly. He knows what it's like to put his life on the line for the brothers and sisters that he loves. Our faith does not shield us from difficult times. Our faith allows us to endure, as Jesus has said. So, we maybe need to wear safety pins. Every cross that we wear should be a sign of a safety pin. All of us are safety pins. Not because we are political. It is not, or at least in my mind, that is not trying, we are not trying to make a political statement. The statement that we should be making as Christians is that every one of us is a brother and a sister. All of creation. We are all brothers and sisters. And it is our energy, our willingness, our ability to endure that allows us to know that all of our brothers and sisters need to be treated with kindness and decency and respect. This is what we are about. And this is the people that we are. So people that say things that do go against that, do not listen to them. Don't waste your time on trying to figure out if there's an antichrist. Spend your time understanding Christ amongst us. That's where our energy has to go. That's where we have to spend our time to see brothers and sisters in this world. Some are having great days of triumph, and others are having terrible days of tribulation. We reach out to them. These are our brothers and sisters. How do we endure difficulty? How do we flip our vision from the disaster film to the vision of the lion and the lamb and the wolf? You want to learn how? I'm going to give you the simple Franciscan way. You ready? Y'all want this? It's really simple. You're going to have to do something. Would you take my hand? And would you hold your fingers? Would you all hold hands? <laughs> we we might even bridge the the aisle here. holding hands. Now let me ask you this. You look around. You see your brothers and sisters in this room. And tell me, is there not enough compassion? 
and mercy and forgiveness and kindness and love here? Yes. 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 This is who we are. This is the people of God. This is the kingdom of God on earth today. No one, no one will separate us from each other. No one separates us from God. We are God's children. Never forget this. This is who we are as a people. We are brothers and sisters. We bring on apocalyptic days. We will endure. We love one another. This is who we are as a people. God bless us. Amen. Amen. Amen.